HTML tag, and I want to spruce it up with some JavaScript to make it a bit more attractive and usable. So to do that, I'm going to write some JavaScript code so I can uh, use uh, code completion. Let's see. Um, so you can see here, I get to see basically not only all the possible components I can instantiate, I get all the documentation as well in the pop-up below here. Right, and so you're using all of the frameworks that come with NetBeans that were part of like the, 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 the Java support. Yes, a lot of that has now been retrofitted to apply to other languages. So I'm going to use this rich uh, text editor here. And I'm going to attach it to my editor component, to my text area. And I'm going to also uh, customize some properties. So if I use code completion again, NetBeans figures out the call I'm in. It's showing basically up here that we're completing the second argument of the constructor. And these are the proper properties we can customize. Right now, all of those things have types. And a lot of that um, <coughs> customization menu is derived from types. Yes. But JavaScript doesn't have a uh, type system, at least not a static type system that you right. can it's run a tool can use. It's all runtime. So you're actually doing uh, type inferencing. Yes, and we're going to get into that a little bit further on in the demo. So if I were to run this now, it would be really disappointing 9e because it basically wouldn't work because we have a trailing comma. And so we've got to get rid of that. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do here is call the uh, render method on this class. Uh, so we take a documentation again, and this will basically cause the component to show. So if I now go to the, edit, to the browser again, you can see we got a really nice rich, rich text editor. So using JavaScript libraries like the Yahoo UI library and a lot of other ones is really simple. Anyway, if you're going to actually write JavaScript code, that's where the whole type inferencing thing comes in. So I'm going to go to a separate class here and write a text source class. Now JavaScript doesn't have classes, but it has objects and properties, and they're being used to simulate classes. And that means understands that. So I'm going to create a, a property here called attach. It's going to take an element and a data field. I'm just going to return uh, true. I'm also going to create a, another property on this called create, which is going to be a factory method. And we're going to return a text source here. So if you look in the navigator over here, you can see several things. We now infer class structure here, which show that you have a static <coughs> method called create, and you have an instance method called attach. And it's also figured out the return types here. So we have a text source coming out of this one, and a boolean in the other one. So if I were to, for example, try to use code completion now, I can call the create method and call method on it. And as you can see, it knows the text source. I'm going to present you with the attach method. Okay, so let's go and uh, refine this code a bit. First thing I want to do is validate the data parameter. So I'm going to make sure that it's not null. Uh, and if so, I'm going to basically exit. And at this point, uh, that piece is lighting up with warnings. Uh, the first thing it's saying is, well, this is not comparison. Well, you're doing an assignment in comparison. Right. Just not a good idea. Right. So, so, so the warnings are those small little, uh, small little light bulbs. Sometimes that means it's a little more subtle than it ought to be. That's why you should use the task list on the bottom here, which is actually showing you all the quick fixes. And, you, and it can show that for the whole project if you want to go and go through all your source files and sanitize them. So uh, let's see. We're going to oh, the wrong key. We're going to uh, basically convert this assignment to comparison. And we have another warning. It's saying that there are Actually, that this return statement is inconsistent with the previous one. In one case, we're returning a value, and in another one, we're not. How would a client of this function know how to interpret the return value? This is actually a really common thing that are done in many, is done in many libraries. Here's the prototype library in, uh, well, the, the common JavaScript prototype library. And if you scroll down here, you can see there's actually quite a few of these uh, return value problems. So you can see right at the beginning here, we have a return <coughs> returning a value. Right, so, so, so because JavaScript really doesn't have compile time checking for much of anything, right. um, most code that's out there is littered with issues like this, and you're actually able to track them down. So this is a great way to take JavaScript code that uh, works 99% of the time, and usually the issues are in places that are doing like error recovery, you know, stuff that's not executed very often, but when, it, when you need it, it breaks. And precisely, it's really fun to take NetBeans and bring it up on other JavaScript libraries that clearly haven't used NetBeans and see the stuff in their source they didn't think of. So uh, now I want to basically get into the type analysis, analysis thing a bit more. So here we have a function that takes an element. 
well, how, how do we know the type of the element? Well, we can't figure that out. And so what's done often in JavaScript is you get to put annota type annotations in your code. So we're going to do that as part of the documentation. So I'm going to put a parameter tag here and say that this uh, the element parameter is a type of HTML element. And now we're getting a complaint here saying that, yeah, our documentation is not consistent. We have more parameters in documentation. So let's also document the data parameter. Uh, data. Oh, we call the parameter D, so we'll change that to data. And now you can see that the, the field down here is green. This would not be valid Java code. You would get a static compiler error that the D is unknown. In JavaScript, this is valid. It's a global variable read. Clearly not what I intended. It's not an error. So we don't show it as an error. We put a different color on it to make it but clear. In, in, in JavaScript, there's no, no way to tell whether or not it is correctly a global variable or not because there are no static scope rules. Precisely. Precisely. So I'm going to change this into data here. And by the way, a better way to, for me to have done this would be to use the instant rename function, which you know edits everything synchronously, including the documentation, so you can keep this in sync. So now we have uh, knowledge about what the element uh, element parameter is. So if I now use code completion, you can see we're getting element uh, methods as well as inherited methods, like from the node class in DOM. So I'm going to call the let's see the set user data method. And now you can see here. We have strike through on some of these methods, and if you look in the documentation window, there's some icons for common browsers, such as Firefox, IDE, Safari, and so forth. And we're also getting information that this method is not supported by all the browsers we're trying to target. So we know, you can tell that means which browsers you care about. We know which functions are supported in what browsers, and if there's a delta, we warn you about it. So I'm just going to call the set user data method here. Breakpoints, call stack, threads, and so forth. Yeah, so, but this also only works in Firefox. Yes, it currently works. It is the one true browser that everybody should be using. Please use Firefox. <laughs> but we're. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we have Firefox. <laughs> Unfortunately, you, many of you will probably have to support IE for a while, and so we're actually working on a debugger solution for IE as well. Yeah. Not ready to show that yet. So let's run to the next breakpoint. Uh, I just did. And I see now that this pointer is pointing to the window object. That is not what I had intended. I wanted to call recursively into my current object into the animate method. That's my bug. So if I change that to effect painter, the current object, and I save, and I go back to my file. You, you can see we now have the animation that uh, I was going for in the beginning. Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. I think, I think everybody here writes, uh, writes enough painful JavaScript code that, that that will be really, really handy for you all. So uh, the next demo uh, is kind of a surprise demo. We didn't know we were going to do this demo until like, like 9 o'clock last night. Um, several people you know, just about killed themselves making this happen. And I certainly didn't think it was going to actually happen. So I'd like to call, call up Ken Russell and Sven Goto and um, talk about the, the, the NVIDIA APX 2500.